As it stands right now, Ohio lawmakers have five weeks to draw new congressional district maps. The state is appealing a federal court decision that ordered the new map after finding the current districts are extremely gerrymandered. The court this week denied a request to delay that order to redraw the map. The state will now ask the U.S. Supreme Court to delay the order until at least the high court decides other gerrymandering cases. Jackie Borchard, is there any movement at all, even quietly at the state house, to start drawing a map just in case the court decisions don't go their way? Short answer, no. Uh, Democrats uh, have, did say this week that they want to get they want to get going. They want to get started. Uh, of course, the Republicans are the ones that are defending the maps in court. Although House Speaker Larry Householder did say he was started, he woke up in the middle of the night thinking about squiggly lines. So, uh, you know, they have a lot of stuff on their plate right now. This is uh, not really the best time to cram in you know, an unconstitutional uh, map redrawing. They have got the state budget going on, and the House just passed that, and it's moving over to the Senate. Uh, they've got an energy um, subsidy bill that, that's very highly contentious. So they, they have a lot going on. Although plaintiffs will say, in this case, will say they don't really need that much time. You know, we've got uh, computers and, and computer software that can easily draw a uh, map that meets constitutional muster in, you know, a matter of days or even weeks. Yeah, a friend of mine suggested just type in Ohio congressional districts into Google and see what they come up with, <laughs> see what kind of map they draw. It, uh, do people at the State House, Laura, feel that the courts will step in, or is it is it a toss-up? What's the feeling down there on the chances of this appeal? I think it depends on who you ask. I think the Democrats are really hopeful, but I think the Republicans are also feeling pretty good that uh, they can either run out the clock on it or, you know, kind of just do, you know, they're going to win the next level up. They just have to get to the next level up. Um, you know, it's, but, but TikTok, uh, June 14th is coming quick. Yeah. And uh, and Jackie's right there. They do have kind of a full plate right now, but um, you know the, that software is really powerful. They can just get started if they if they are so inclined. Mike, this could be chaos if the if they are ordered to redo the map. You start in Pennsylvania. That was a state supreme court decision right. in 2018. Uh, they won't be. Uh, I predict the Supreme, United States Supreme Court will grant our stay, and then they're going to ultimately rule by June thirtieth, five four six three decision that uh, the district courts or even the state court in Pennsylvania cannot force the legislature. We have three co-equal branches of government on how to draw the lines. Now, look, here's the thing: we should all be worried about why June fourteenth. What's so special about that date? I'm going to tell you right now. This three-judge panel wasn't the entire Sixth Circuit. Just this three-judge panel is trying to get in before the United States Supreme Court, their big brother, rules because they know they're going to be overruled. This is they're ruling is not going to be upheld. Our lines are going to stay. The voters voted by a three to one margin to redo this in 2020. And we're going to, we have a bipartisan effort. A super majority bipartisan group came together to pass this, got it on the ballot. We are constitutional. We are not redrawing lines. And the United States Supreme Court is going to uphold this. I guarantee it. That three judge panel, two Democrats appointees and one Republican appointee. Yes, so they were more or less bipartisan. And Michigan had a similar ruling just a few days before Ohio's ruling came in. Derek, Democrats hopeful they can get this the maps redrawn. Absolutely, twenty eighteen. Absolutely, uh, you know, twenty twenty. The, I mean. the voters are the ones that are losing this because these these uh, these law these lines that have been drawn are dis disenfranchised voters. Bottom line. You, I, I would say you disagree I, with that? I, I take offense to that respectfully, Derek, because these lines were created by a supermajority bipartisan group of legislators, 132 members, eight years ago. Supermajority voted for these lines. Voters have voted on it the past three, four elections. Keep in mind, Marcy Kaptur came in, and you can Google this. She wants the snake by the lake. Oh. It was her who asked for the snake by the lake. And Joyce Beatty likes her district, she too. She loves her right. district, too. Mean it's not are... disenfranchising anyone. This was voted on Democrats and Republicans, supermajority in the legislature well, voted. The, so the, you the, telling the, me the, your the, party, the, you, so you telling me your party has not gerrymandered these lines? No, they haven't. In fact, we created one for Joyce Beatty, just for her. But that's, yeah, but gerryman that's, that's still gerrymandering. Right. No, no, creating thank you. the lines thank to you. serve a political thank purpose you. is not still to, gerrymandering. No, it's to create a district for the residents of Franklin County so you don't have Mike Lent this back, back then, Pat T. Berry, or now Troy Balderson representing the people. You have one for them. Look, when they divided Franklin County, they said, it's not fair, you're separating African-American voters. Then you create one just for Franklin County, and then they say, it's not fair, you're packing them no, all together. The reason, so you're damned if you do, and you're damned the if reason you don't. That, the reason politics. why that district was was created for Rep or Congresswoman Beatty is to protect, uh, at the time, Congressman T. Berry and to protect Congressman Stivers. That's the reason why that district was was created. Well, it's packing and cracking, Laura. That's that's the that's sure, it's been going on for decades. And you know the people who are happiest with these are the incumbent lawmakers. 
plain and simple. That's why Joyce Beatty, yeah. uh, Marcy Kaptur may have supported this, this the, that particular district, or Marcy Jim Bunch. Jim Jordan loves his district, or um, Stivers likes his. I mean, it's, it it satisfies the incumbents, um, and the question is, are the it, are the uh, politicians picking their constituents? or the constituents picking their politicians. Don't forget it was Steve Austria, a Republican who got drawn out last time when we created Joyce Beatty. So, we're, you know, we never that, that little fact keeps getting missed that we lost a Republican and the Democrats gain, gained a Democrat but seat. The bottom line is there are 16 seats, 12 Republicans to four Democrats, even though the state is 50-50. Well, if you look at the close overall enough. election. If it's 55-65, it still yeah. wouldn't be close. All statewide elections continue 45. to go to the GOP, minus Sherrod Brown, every single cycle. And that's not a gerrymandered, that's a statewide vote, as Dave Yost, our great attorney general, has pointed out. Well, I think the, you know, the larger point is the 12-4 split hasn't changed. You know, since these maps have been in place right. since the 2012 election, they haven't changed. And you've had almost all of the same incumbents stay in their seats that time. And so that's kind of where the argument, you know, also plaintiffs in this case are voters who live in each of those districts who say, you know, I go to the polls, I vote, but my vote doesn't really matter because my uh, representative has already been chosen for me. Yeah. If you look, if you look pre-2012, there was even, there was even uh, Republicans and Democrats in the, in the House. And to Jackie's point, after 20, after the, the 2012 maps were drawn, it's been 12 to 4, and it's been like that by a 12 to 4 margin ever since.